They're being led by Tom Leiser, actually, down toward uh, the goal to receive. Jim Angel was down at the other end, and he'll get back there with Leiser, and Nickerson's going to kick off. Barry Nickerson will kick off for the Army team. When we saw Navy in their opening game this season uh, with Roger Staubach in the back with a quarterback. He had an all-senior group with him. Now it's an all-sophomore group with the exception of Roger Staubach. There you see Angel, number 21, and Leiser, number 25. The deep men to receive this kickoff for Navy. It's a Navy home game. They're wearing the Navy blue. And now we need another Navy man deep, and he is racing onto the field, and he is Rudhouse. Alan Rudhouse has gone deep also to give him an alignment of three men as they go one shy. So we'll get straightened out for the kickoff. The visiting Army team in white here this afternoon. Barry Nickerson starts forward, and the Army-Navy game is underway. Lizer waits at the three-yard line. Lizer to the five to the ten. Lizer to the 15, and he is out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Benny Stowers, number 61, made the tackle. So Navy has the football, first and 10. It is being spotted at the 7, at the 18-yard line. In that backfield, Roger Staubach, number 12, is the quarterback. Danny Wong, 36, is the fullback. Calvin Huey, 49, is the flanker. And Tom Leiser, 25, is the left halfback. And now, they beat the snap. The penalty marker is down. Staubach throws, and it is incomplete. As you saw, number 16, Roley Stitchway try to intercept. So, Navy had a lineman beat the snap. They're offside. It'll cost them five yards on the first play from scrimmage. There are five men playing both ways for Army, playing both offense and defense, and they are Sonny Stowers, number 61, Pete Braun, number 50, uh, Bill Zadell, number 76, number 16, Roley Stitchway, and number 22, Sam Johnson. Those five men will go both offensively and defensively for Army. Referee David Buchanan steps off the five-yard penalty offside against Navy. They had a line that a little over anxious, and he beat the snap as they went to the air on the first play from scrimmage. Perhaps you've seen the five stars on those Navy jerseys indicating five consecutive victories over the Army team. Split an end way out, taken this time by Starbuck, handed off in close. Taken by Lizer. Number 25 there was Lizer, and he was brought down by Dave Rivers and Townsend Clark. There is the Corps of Cadets of the United States Military Academy. Second down and 15 at the 13 for the Navy team. Split the running backs. Roger Staubach rolls back now. And he is hit and knocked into the end zone. Staubach. Staubach knocked across the goal line. Is it going to be spotted out? It's a safety. It is a safety. And it's two points for the Army team. Army on that last series of down. Their normal defense is a 5-4. Five, Five-man line, two linebackers, and a four-deep secondary. But on that play, they moved Don Dietz, number 37, up into the line. They had an eight-man front, and they had eight men coming and coming hard, and that caused Roger Staubach to be dropped in the end zone for the safety, as you saw it. Sonny Stowers, a linebacker, was the man who hit him first and drove him back across that goal line. So it is Army 2 and... Navy nothing, and Navy gets a free kick, of course, from the 20-yard line. They can place kick it, they can punt it, they can put it in play that way from the 20. This NCAA college football game is brought to you live in color exclusively on NBC TV. John F. Kennedy Stadium in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Williams will put the ball. Tom Williams will kick the ball. He's uh, wearing a six. He was number 86, but now he's wearing a number six. Tom Williams, the punter. John Seymour is deep for the Army team to receive this punt. Floats it up there. Seymour comes up the middle of the 40-yard line at the 45. Seymour to the 50. And is still there at the midfield strike. So Army gets the ball. At the Navy 50-yard line, Don Downing was there to make the tackle. So it is first and 10 now for Army. Army has the ball at the 50. Earl Stitchway, 16, is the quarterback. John Seymour, 43, is the tailback. Don Parcells, 31, is the fullback. Johnny Johnson, 22, is the wingback. Sam Champy is split far out to the right side. 
the flanker to the near side is Johnny Johnson. Stitchway lost the pass, and it's incomplete. It was intended for Dave Ray, number 87. They also had Seymour downfield. There you saw the new wrinkle by Army for this game, I'm sure. Coach Paul Dietzel and his staff, a double wing with no fullback left, just the quarterback, two wingbacks, and a split end and a flanker. Opening up, spread it all over the field. I'm sure that ball is going to be in the air this afternoon quite a bit. Second down and 10 yards to go for Army. Sam Chappie again is split to the right side. Set in the double wing. This is Seymour carrying number 43. And Seymour picked up one yard and maybe two as Al Rudhouse, number 40, came up from the secondary. Dave Gillespie, 64, also over there on the play. It's a gain of two yards, make it third down and eight now for the Army team. They've had identical sets on the first two plays with Champion split far to the right side and Johnson flanked to the left. And then back set just outside. The interior lineman there on the shotgun now. Stitchway is deep, a quick kick. End over in, he should get a good roll. And it's at the 15, the 10, the 5, and it is stopping just short of the goal line. However, it is going to be brought out to the 20 as it touched the goal line in the opinion of the official. It is a touchback. It'll be brought out to the 20. Well, the question was whether or not it would stop short. It touched the goal line, which brings it out to the 20, a touchback, and Navy gets the ball. One inch made a big difference. It made a difference at 20 yards. Are they going to put that ball down had it not touched the goal line? Of course, it's legal for in college uh, football. Uh, it wasn't a couple of years ago, but you could down it inside the 10, get it as close to the goal line as you can, and really put a team in the hole. Navy has the ball again. Navy and Army each in its first play from scrimmage went to the air here this afternoon. Both passes were incomplete. Calvin Hewitt, number 49, is flanked far to the right side. Roger Starbuck retreats, sets, leaps into the air, throws the screen, and it's taken at the 15, the 20 by Lizer, and he's up to the 22-yard line. Tom Lizer hit by John Carver, number 73. And a two yards on the completed pass behind the line. It's second down and eight. Army's had success with the eight-man front, moving number 37 once again. Don Deese, the roving linebacker, up into the line of scrimmage. So basically, they have a three deep. They have five men on the line of scrimmage, two linebackers. And then when they move Don Deese up, it's a combination of a 6-2 or a 5-3. But they're eight men so close, it's almost an eight-man front. Bill Stutt, number 83, is in there at left end now for Navy. Staubach handing it off in close to Lizer. And the sophomore left halfback goes to the 27-yard line. Townsend Clark, number 56, the sophomore linebacker for Army made the, made the tackle. It'll be third down and three yards to go now as you look at the Army defense deploy. And that is the Navy huddle with Roger Staubach, last year's Heisman Trophy winner, calling the plays in the huddle. This year's Heisman Trophy winner, John Heward of Notre Dame. Staubach still has the ball, number 12, throws on the run, batted down by Johnny Johnson, number 22. Calvin Huey, number 49, is the man for whom it was intended. Fourth down and three yards to go now. And Williams, the kicker, comes into the ball game for Navy, wearing number six. Normally he wears number 86. So in the kicking situation, Roley Stitchway retreats in a single safety. Williams waits for the snap. It's a good pass. Gets it away. Roley Stitchway retreats. Takes it over his shoulder at the 31. He's at the 30. And he is still at the 33-yard line. Roley Stitchway. Fred Marlin, number 65, and Pat Philbin, 75. Downfield to make the tackle. So Army gets the ball this time. They get it at the 33. A moment ago, they had it in midfield at the 50 after the free kick. There's timeout on the field, and the score is Army nothing and Navy nothing. We have 11 minutes, two seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter with Army leading on the safety by a score of two to nothing, and that is the Army huddle. They have it first and 10 at their own 33-yard line. Rolly Stitchway calls the plays in the huddle. His name is Carl, but he is known as Rolly. 
Stitchway retreats, sets, keeps the ball. 35-yard line to 36. He picked up three. It's second down and seven yards to go. Don Downing and Gene Hartman, the linebackers, made the tackle. With the fullback spot vacant in order to run a draw play, faking a pass and running a draw. It's got to be a quarterback draw, and that's what you saw there. The lineman assimilating a pass block, letting the men take the outside, try to move them out and open up a little hole for Roley Stitchway. Same set. Sam Champions is split on top of your screen, and Johnny Johnson is to the left, and they're in the shotgun now, and they're going to kick it again with Stitchway again. Firing it out of there. It hits on the 12, bounce to the 5. Is it going to stop this time? No, it's not. It goes in there and is blown dead now for the touchback. You know, the official hesitates there because should that ball bound back across that goal line and finally settle, that is where it would be spotted. The fact that it goes across doesn't mean a thing until it settles and is blown dead. It's apparent Paul Dietzel and the staff uh, coming into this game, they're trying for field position, trying to get that ball on the other side of the 50 in Navy territory. Keep the ball there, even though Navy has it. Try to take it away from them and get the good field position either at midfield or in their territory before they go on offense. Tony Pierce is in at safety now defensively for the Army in place of Stitchway. Roger Staubach calling signals for Navy. Play goes back to the inside with Danny Wong, number 36, the fullback carrying. And Danny Wong moved it to the 25-yard line. It is second down and five. Tom Schwartz, 84, Ed Noble, number 20, made the tackle for Army. Roger Starbuck was injured in the very first game of the season this year for the Navy team. Calvin Huey from Pascagoula, Mississippi is flanked to the right side. Tom Leiser gets the handoff and Leiser hits in near the 30-yard line. Townsend Clark, number 56, made the tackle. Townsend Clark is a sophomore. He is from Newport, Rhode Island. He weighs 210 pounds and has had a fine sophomore season. It is third down and less than a yard to go. The ball just short of the 30-yard line. That is the Army defense. The 56 you see is Townsend Clark. They try to sneak it with Staubach carrying. And it appeared that he may very well have picked up the first down. Roger Staubach. It is first and ten for the Navy. And that's the first first down of the ball game. The Army has not made a first down yet, nor has Navy up until now. And this is the first first down with nine minutes, pardon me, eight minutes, 55 seconds left, uh, and the clock is running. So it's first and 10 now at the 31. Phil Norton is split far to the right side as Navy in a shotgun gets it to Starbuck. And he can't go, and Starbuck is still back at the 26-yard line for a loss of five. Sonny Stower, the firing linebacker, and Dave Rivers, a defensive end, brought him down. So it is second down. Well, we knew coming into the game that both Navy and Army had used the shotgun or spread formation with two great quarterbacks, Staubach for Navy, Stitchway for Army, but they haven't wasted any time right in the first quarter. They're moving out, spreading all over the field and throwing the ball. Navy stays in the shotgun. Staubach is deep, gets a direct pass, retreats, leaps in the air, throws the screen to Wong. And he is filled for a loss again. Danny Wong is the man who took it. And Townsend Clark made the tackle. The ball is at the 24, a loss of two. It's third and 17. Army leading by a score of two to nothing. And we're in the first quarter with seven minutes, 54 seconds remaining to be played in this period. Bill Stutt, number 83, comes in and in now for the Navy team. Jim Ryan comes off the field for Navy. Stitchway is back in there defensively at safety for Army. Staubach with the ball. Again throws out into the flat on the screen. And it's taken by Huey. And Huey moves up across the 25 to the 26-yard line. Sonny Stower has made the tackle. Gain overall of two yards on the play far to the left flat. And it'll be fourth and 15. You can see Roger Staubach's use of the screen pass because that Army forward wall on defense, they're coming in and coming in very, very tough. They've been putting a strong five-man rush sometimes. Seven or eight coming in on him, and he wants to loosen them up, slow that rush down a little bit. Tom Williams, the Navy punter, is in the game, and that is Rowley Stitchway in single safety for the Army to receive the punt. Williams. With the boot, Johnny Johnson lets it roll. It's across the 50 now, bounce back downfield. It's down by the Navy, by Calvin Huey at the 40. 
seven-yard line. Phil Norton there at the ball, number 84 as well. Penalty marker is down, and clipping is indicated. Clipping is the preliminary signal. So Dave Buchanan, the referee, is getting situated there from the spot of the foul. It will cost Army 15 yards. That moves the ball back to the 35-yard line. Clipping indicated by referee Buchanan. It is first and 10 at the 35 since the clipping was effected on the run back. We have six minutes, 37 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Army leading by a score of two to nothing. Seymour in motion. Stitchway has the ball out to Seymour. At the 45 and Seymour across the 50 yard line. Out of bounds right there at midfield. That is Seymour, number 43. He was injured a good part of the season. You see the Navy secondary has to respect Roley Stitchway. There's a shot of the Army huddle. Roley Stitchway falling place. He's a fine running back. When he moves out outside on the rollout pass, that secondary has to commit themselves because he can run, and he runs it well. So the minute they moved up, he fired the pass to Seymour, as you saw. It. It's cloudy, and it's overcast here this afternoon, and the temperature at noon was 57 degrees. Seymour back to the inside, and Seymour to the 43-yard line. John Mickelson, number 89, on the tackle. Second down and three yards to go for the Army team. An Army team that has won three and lost six so far this season. A Navy team that has won three, lost five, and tied one. Each of these teams was able to win only one of its last seven games. Navy beat Duke. Army beat Iowa State. Move it up the middle this time. To Don Parcells carrying to the 40-yard line. Perhaps the first down. First time offensively that Army settled down to their normal, or what you call their basic attack. There's the first down. So the Army team has a first down. That's the 39-yard line. Army two and Navy nothing with five minutes, 28 seconds remaining in the first quarter. John F. Kennedy Stadium in Philadelphia. It's a Seymour. Passing in across the 35. Al Rudhouse and Dave Gillespie made the tackle. In a five, it's second and five. That has been Army's basic offense all year long. They'll have run it from tight ends or with a split end, the wing tee. Good power off tackles, and they'll show a little razzle-dazzle as the game develops. Big Jim Freeman, number 79, is coming there defensively now at tackle for Navy to try to stem the Army advance. Jim Freeman, one of the fine tackles. Second and five, the situation. They try to parcels the fullback. And the Navy defense piles him up the center of the line, gain of about a half yard. Make it third and four. At the 33, there is the Navy defense. Names are on their backs, as you see. And the Army huddle with Stitchway calling the plays. Army has used a variety of offensive sets so far. So is Navy, for that matter. Seymour in motion. Stitchway rolling. And he's going to carry it himself. 30, 25, 20. And he's diving forward. Out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Rowley Stitchway, number 16. Duncan Ingram made the tackle. When Army comes out on the double wing with the flanker and the split end accompanying it, what they do is they force Navy into a four-deep defense. They get rid of one man back off that line of scrimmage. And on the bootleg, on the bootleg play, there was, wasn't any man on the outside to cover Stitchway, and he can run. He's got good speed. Coach Paul Dietzel is alternating Cheryl and Carver at offensive tackle, bringing in plays from the bench. Raleigh Stitchway, a 190-pound quarterback from Williston Park, New York, took the ball first and 10 to the 14. This time... It's taken by Johnny Johnson coming off the wing and Fred Muselli and Dave Gillespie combined to pull him down at the 11-yard line. Running that last play from tight tee, both ends in the bike in the tight backfield. Army has just shown the fourth different offensive formation thus far this afternoon. 
time. He's leading by a score of two to nothing and driving here in the first period with two minutes, 55 seconds remaining to be played in this quarter. 102,000 fans on hand here this afternoon. Seymour in motion. Stitchway with the ball, looks for Seymour. Goes to the end zone, incomplete, and did he hold on to it for the interception or did he not? Navy thinks he intercepted in the end zone. And it is, he did, and it's a touchback. And it's brought out to the 20 yard line. Duncan Ingram, Duncan Ingram is the man who pulled it down for the interception. The only question was whether or not Ingram had possession before he went across the end line. The official was right there, said he did have possession, he did have both feet there, and it is a touchback. It's brought out to the 20. There's timeout on the field, and the score is Army 2 and Navy nothing. Carried the ball into the center of the line. Navy on offense and the running attack, they've been trying to go off guard, trying to trap a good deal. That big roar that went up in there looks like Pat Donnelly coming into the game, number 38 for Navy. Pat Donnelly, the hero of last year's Army-Navy game when he scored three Navy touchdowns, has come in on offense now for the Navy. Here in the first quarter with two minutes, four seconds left to play. They're in a shotgun, and Roger Starbuck gets a direct snap. Gets across to the 22. Donnie Johnson coming up to make the tackle. A gain of a yard as it's spotted, so make it third down and nine at the 21. Taken by Roger Starbuck, and he fires complete out into the flat. Taken by Calvin Huey, as he skidded along to the 27-yard line. It'll be fourth and three. Last year, more than 22 million sports-minded Americans headed for the campus to watch their favorite football teams in action. It was the 10th consecutive season. College football attendance had set a new all-time record. It's a good bet this year's total will make it 11 straight. That 1964 brought more than ever before. Roley Stitchway is the center deep man there as Williams is in to do the punting now for the Navy team. Stitchway calls for a fair catch. Drops the ball and recovers at the 33-yard line. You have to catch the football. He recovered it at the 33, first and 10 for Army. Army is leading by a score of two to nothing and we have 30 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter. After the ball is marked ready for play, you have 25 seconds to put it in play. So let's see if they get one off in this period. Carver's in there at offensive tackle now. Paul Dietzel is alternating Cheryl and Carver. Rolly Stitchway, the quarterback. Seymour in motion. Seymour has the football, number 43, down the sideline to the 43-yard line. You see the clock stopped when Seymour stepped on the sideline. Pat Donnelly. Coming up to make the tackle. That's spread formation uh, with this uh, flankers put in and the double wing that Army's using. As I mentioned before, it's four deep for Navy on defense, four deep secondary men, a four-man line with three linebackers. So they get them neutralized pretty well up along that line of scrimmages, but opening some good holes on the wide sweeps and off tackle for Army. Second down and less than a yard to go for the Army team. The clock will not start again until the ball is snapped. You see it there, frozen at four seconds remaining in the first quarter with Army leading by a score of two to nothing. They try it straight ahead and pick up the first down. Going to the 46-yard line, Don Parcells got the first down and time has run out here in the first period. That's the end of the first quarter of the score is Army 2 and Navy nothing. Army has the ball in Navy territory, first and 10 at the Navy 46-yard line. On 
Riley Stitchway, number 16, the quarterback. They start Johnny Johnson in motion, and they give it instead to John Seymour hitting back to the inside. He got to the 48-yard line, and Don Downing, number 51, made the tackle. Gain of two, it's second down, and eight yards to go. Seymour is 43, Parcells is 31, Johnson is 20, and Stitchway is 16. Johnson is 22. This is Stitchway. Now he throws, and it's incomplete. Penalty marker down, an interference call on the far side. Johnny Johnson, 22, the man for whom it was intended, Duncan Ingram, is the man who cut him down on the penalty marker. Appeared to have been thrown, however, uh, apparently it wasn't. Apparently we misread the penalty marker, as it looked as though the official threw one, but uh, it's brought back as an incompleted pass. So as you were, Johnson goes out of the ballgame now, number 22. Greg Steele has come in there at halfback now. Stitchway moves it across the 50 and up to the 49-yard line. A fourth down situation now. Fourth and five. John Seymour does the punting for the Army team. And they shift into deep punt formation, sending Seymour deep. And that is Skip Orr, the deep man you saw. Skip Orr, number 33, waits at the 11-yard line. He's back to the 15. And hit down on the 17-yard line. Steele made the tackle, so it is first and 10 now. Or Navy, as the Middies get the ball at their own 17 in the second quarter, Army leading by a score of two to nothing. Army has been successful in keeping Navy with their back to the wall throughout this first half and into the second quarter with 13 minutes showing on the clock. Good punting by Seymour, some quick kicking done by Army, and Navy has never had the ball beyond midfield. Donnelly protecting for Staubach there in the shotgun formation, and Staubach fires it, it's deflected incomplete. An unrushing lineman got a hand up to deflect that one. Carver and Zadel both charging in there. So on the incompleted pass, the clock is stopped, and Navy and Army both make multiple substitutions. 32 scholarship grants worth $1,000 each to top senior scholar athletes going on to do graduate work are being made for the first time this year by the National Collegiate Athletic Association. There'll be no shortage of candidates either, for today's athlete is making higher grades than ever before in the honors program of the university. There's time out on the field with the score, Army 2 and Navy nothing. The 65th meeting of Army and Navy. This one at John F. Kennedy Stadium here in Philadelphia before 102,000 fans. Many times the President of the United States attends the Army-Navy game. President Johnson is not here today. It is second and ten for the Navy. They have the ball at the 17. Starbuck passing to Leiser. And Leiser across the 30. And out of bounds on the far side. Johnny Johnson made the tackle. It'll be brought into the inbounds marker about the 36-yard line. New formation by Navy. Double flanker to the right. They flooded the zone over there. Three men going out. There you see Paul Dietzel on the sidelines. The dark coat flags down also. Penalty marker on the play, and so the pass play is all for naught as it's brought back now, and referee Dave Buchanan gets set. And he is now stepping off the penalty against the Navy. An ineligible pass receiver downfield. An ineligible pass receiver downfield. Moves the ball back now to the eight-yard line. Half the distance, and Tony Pierce is in there at safety number 10 in place of Stitchway. 
Jim Angel, number 21, is in at left halfback, and Liza is out for the Navy team. Staubach with the ball, again in dangerous territory, out to the five. Staubach got to the nine-yard line. Townsend Clark and Pete Braun made the tackle. Staubach again was moving along the one-yard line. When Navy gets in a conventional formation with their split end and flanker back in the normal T or sometimes the I formation, Army gets up on this eight-man front and it just seems to jam their offensive attack. So Navy's been going more and more to the shotgun or the spread with Staubach deep. And he's been getting rushed so hard and trying to throw the ball that he's been trying to run some sweeps that once again to loosen up the Army defense. They're in about 15. Lazar's back in at halfback. Staubach. Set. Sets again. Now moves out to the 10. And he is pulled out at the 10-yard line. He picked up one yard on the play. Townsend Clark and Bill Zadell made the tackle. Zadell is from Mount Prospect, Illinois. That's the greatest Chicago area. And he weighs 235 pounds, and he's been on a number of all-star selections. Roger Staubach was moving around, trying to get free and take just a little extra time because he had Jim Ryan, big number 88 for his team for Navy, down deep, and he was in the open. Tom Williams will be kicking from the Navy end zone as Raleigh Stitchway is in single safety for the Army team. Williams gets it out, a spiraling kick that is driving Stitchway back. He muffs it at the 40. Picks it up at the 34, to the 35, to the 40, and leaps through a whole host of Navy men to get it up to the 46-yard line. What a scramble. You bet he almost had it, too. He ducked under that last man and just got tripped up. There wasn't anybody left if he got by that last one. First and 10 for the Army team at their own 46-yard line. Army is leading Navy by a score of 2 to nothing. The Corps of Cadets is here. The Brigade of Midshipmen is here. If you think it's noisy in Philadelphia, you're right. To Seymour, number 43, and he is across the 40 and going to the 37-yard line of Navy. John Seymour, a 195-pound halfback. So it is first and 10 now for Army at the Navy 37-yard line. You know, the former Army superintendent, General William Westmoreland, is the man who brought Paul Dietzel to West Point, and understandably, he is vitally interested in the outcome of this football game. He is a four-star general also in Vietnam, and this game today is being broadcast by Lee's line to Vietnam. There's time out on the field, and the score is Army 2 and Navy nothing. We're at the Army-Navy game. It's first and 10 for the Army team. They have the ball at the Navy 37. And there's the Corps of Cadets. And there's the Brigade of Midshipmen. Parcells in motion. Seymour with the football for the 30, 25, 20. John Seymour out of bounds at the five-yard line. Army came back with the very same play. They took Don Parcells, number 31, put him in motion toward the far side of the field. They pulled the linebackers, influenced the linebackers a little bit uh, uh, for Navy, and then gave the ball to Seymour, coming back to the right side, the short side of the field, just as you saw it, a type of counterplay from their double-wing formation. First down and goal to go for Army. They have the ball at the Navy five-yard line. John Seymour carrying the ball, and Skip Orr came up to bounce him out of bounds. This is Rolly Stitchway, and he throws, and it's touchdown! Taken by Sam Chappie, number 86. Sam Chappie for the touchdown. It will be Piers holding, and Nickerson will attempt the conversion for Army now. That touchdown came with 9 minutes, 49 seconds remaining in the first half. Army leading 8-0 now with a conversion attempt coming. 
Pierce gets the snap. It's down. Nickerson's kick is up. It's no good. Wide to the right. So as they come back up the field, it is Army 8 and Navy nothing. NBC Sports will present the most and the best of the postseason bowl games on Saturday, December 26th, the Sun Bowl from El Paso with Texas Tech meeting a team yet to be selected. On Friday, January 1st, a New Year's triple header in color. The Sugar Bowl from New Orleans, LSU versus Syracuse. The Rose Bowl from Pasadena, Michigan against an AAW team, an AAWU team yet to be selected. And the Orange Bowl. Texas versus Alabama for the first time under the lights from Miami. Saturday, January 2nd, the East-West All-Star Shrine Game from San Francisco. Saturday, January 9th, the Senior Bowl in color from Mobile. Sunday, January 10th, the NFL All-Star Pro Bowl game in color from Los Angeles. This great lineup of top bowl games exclusively on NBC. Roothouse of the deep men as Nickerson's kickoff is taken at the 15-yard line. Roothouse returning, and he is across the 30 and brought down there. Johnny Johnson made the tackle, and Navy will put the ball in play first and 10 at the 31 on Allen Roothouse return of the kickoff. Army leading by a score of 8 to nothing. Navy has the ball. Roger Staubach, the quarterback. That's Huey in motion. Staubach runs the option. That was pinned by N. Tom Schwartz and linebacker Don Dietz. Roger, Roger Staubach once again trying to challenge and uh, take care of this Army defense that's penetrating, coming in with an eight-man front. He's tried to run the option on that play, which is one of the best ways to attack that type of defense, but the Army team, but particularly the linebackers, are a little bit too tough and coming across very, very hard. Second down and nine yards to go for Navy. Direct snap to Staubach in the shotgun. He fires it upfield to Lizer, incomplete. Lizer, number 25 at the Army 45, had it in his hands, couldn't hang on. And Staubach hit him on the button. He certainly did. And Don Dietz, number 37, the Army defensive man, uh, he missed him. He'd, uh, he'd let Lizer get in behind him. Had he been able to hang on to it, I don't believe they would have caught him because Lizer is a sprinter. He's probably uh, the fastest man on the Navy team now that Paskowitz is hurt and not playing. It is third down and nine yards to go, and they go into the shotgun again with Staubach deep to get the direct pass from center, and he gets it. Goes up in the pocket and he's pinned at the 25 for a loss of seven yards. The on-rushing Army defense led by John Carver and Pete Braun. We have one score for you in the first period. Boston College nothing, Holy Cross six. Fourth and 16 for the Navy. The middies with the ball just across their own 25. And Williams is in to do the punting. That is Rolly Stitchway. Williams gets it out of there. It is at the Army 40. There'll be no run back. At the 37-yard line, it's blown dead. However, there's a penalty marker back downfield at the line of scrimmage. Dave Buchanan, the referee, the man in the white cap, to distinguish him from the other officials because he is the man charged with the enforcement of all penalties, holding is the preliminary signal indicating against Army. So let's see if that's what it is. We try to pick up the preliminary signals to get some uh, idea of what the consultation is. There is the preliminary signal again. And of course, Navy would want to know, would that give them a first down? It was fourth and 16. It would not. As you saw Dave Buchanan indicate, it would be about that much, meaning a little less than a yard. At least he thought so. That's why he went over to take a look at the chain. Situation was fourth and 16. A holding penalty is 15. So now Buchanan is going to step it off and then set up the situation. Holding is the signal you see there against Army. And they're going to now bring out the chain, I believe, to measure for sure. No, no chain. Buchanan wanted the football. It's fourth and one. 
Well, you get holding on that type of play, defensive holding. Uh, Army would try to jam up the Navy line and try to hold them up with the line of scrimmage so that Stitchway could catch the punt and get it underway, get a good chance for a run back, but they held them a little bit too long. You can give them one good shot, one good jolt there in the line of scrimmage. You start to hit them too much, you're holding on, and that's it. Navy's up there to go for it, fourth and one. And Pat Donnelly apparently picked it up. Looked as though he did. Now let's take a long look. He was driving in there for those last two inches. It's a first down. Pat Donnelly got it for the Navy team. Well, that could be a big break for Navy to have the penalty to get most of the uh, yardage necessary for the first down. Then Pat Donnelly to pick it up so that they have the ball. And I believe this is the best field position they've had. They've been with their back to the wall most of the game thus far. And we're seven minutes, uh, seven minutes remaining in the second quarter. Army leading by a score of 8-0. Roger Staubach. That's Huey in motion. Staubach calling starting signals. Runs the option again. The pitch this time on the end of it. And it moves to the 49-yard line with Donnelly carrying on the pitch out from the option play. Pete Braun made the tackle for Army. Once again, that's one of the best ways to attack an eight-man front. You have the single end out there covering the outside, and normally the second man end is a little bit inside shoulder on the offensive end, and he's out there all alone. He's got to handle the quarterback and the trailing back. Jim Ryan comes in there at left end, now number 88 for the Navy team. They have the ball at their own 49. Try it back to the inside with Pat Donnelly, the fullback carrying. Donnelly picked up two. Dave Rivers made the tackle. It'll be third down and a yard to go now. Maybe it's Bill Studd in there at end. And Ryan comes out. You'll recall that Pat Donnelly was the big Navy hero last year in this Army-Navy game when he scored three touchdowns for the Navy team. He has been injured a good part of this season. That should be enough for another Navy first down as Pat Donnelly got it again, number 38. It's a first down for Navy at the 47-yard line of Army. Townsend Clark and Don Parcells made the tackle. Five minutes, 34 seconds remaining in the first half. Bill Norton, number 84, split to the top of your screen. That's Donnelly in motion. Starbuck decides to run it, 45. And to the 40-yard line. It's up about seven yards. Rivers and Stitchway made the tackle. It'll be second down and three yards to go. Talking to Coach Wayne Harden yesterday, he thought that he would have uh, Donnelly, Pat Donnelly, his fine fullback playing defense because of the injuries he uh, incurred through the course of the season and he wasn't quite ready, but the way he's been running that ball the last few plays is down to the next slice. He's in pretty good health. Stutt and Ryan are alternating now in at left end from the Navy bench. Norton is the split end, top of your screen, 84. Right up the middle. Wedging him out. Pat Donnelly. Or rather, Danny Wong, who had come in for Donnelly, and it is at the 37-yard line. They're going to bring out the chain to measure for the first down. Zadell and Townsend Clark made the tackle. Fred Marlin, the Navy captain up there, number 65, taking a look. Well, it is not a first down. They used the chain to spot the ball at the inbounds marker. It lacks just inches. Third down play coming up. Third and inches at the 37-yard line. This NCAA college football game is brought to you live, in color, exclusively on NBC TV. Army is leading Navy by a score of 8 to nothing. Both Danny Wong and Don Lee are in that backfield at this moment. Wong is playing the left halfback position in place of Lizer. This is Roger Starbuck studying and wants to throw. Scrambles along the sideline and is knocked out of bounds. Just about the line of scrimmage. No gain, it would appear to be. Sonny Stowers 
made the tackle. Now, they only needed inches. Generally speaking, it's about the line of scrimmage. So did he get the inches or didn't he? Dave Buchanan looked back over his shoulder to see. He's going to spot the ball now. It'll be a fourth down play coming up. Fourth down and inches to go. Good gamble on the part of Roger Staubach. The secondary of Army was up very tight. One of the safety men on, the, on our side was so close, he must have been four yards from the line of scrimmage. And Staubach almost had a chance to get it deep to his end, but uh, a good Army rush uh, hurt it. Maybe he wants to go for the inches that they need right now. Donnelly gets the football, and he fits the first down for Navy. Inside the 35-yard line of Army. Three minutes, 48 seconds remaining in this half. Townsend Clark made the last tackle for Army. There's the clock running. Army eight and Navy nothing. Army trying to break the spell of the Navy team that has won five consecutive Army-Navy games. Staubach calls time. No, it's a Navy timeout. There's timeout on the field and the score is Army eight and Navy nothing. NBC Sports will present the most and the best of the postseason bowl games on Saturday, December 26th, the Sun Bowl from El Paso, Texas, with Texas Tech meeting a team yet to be selected. Friday, January 1st, a New Year's triple header in color. The Sugar Bowl from New Orleans, LSU versus Syracuse. The Rose Bowl from Pasadena, California, Michigan versus an AAWU team yet to be selected. And the Orange Bowl, Texas versus Alabama for the first time under the lights from Miami. Saturday, January 2nd, the East-West All-Star Shrine Game from San Francisco. Saturday, January 9th, the Senior Bowl in color from Mobile, Alabama. Sunday, January 10th, the NFL All-Star Pro Bowl Game in color from Los Angeles. This great lineup of top bowl games exclusively on NBC TV. And right here, Army is leading Navy by a score of 8 to nothing. We have 3 minutes, 17 seconds remaining in the half. Navy has the ball first and 10 at the Army 35-yard line. Danny Wong is in at fullback, rises the left half back. Donnelly's out of the ball game. Staubach retreats and sets. Is hit, wriggles free, hit again. He's at the 35, push forward and gets to the 27-yard line. Dave Rivers finally brought him down. Gain overall of eight yards on the play, second and two. Well, that looks like the Roger Staubach of old. We saw him last year. We saw him as a sophomore. And he did that and has done it many, many times. Where he looks trapped, hopelessly trapped back there in the backfield. He gets hit and he spins and zigs and zags. The old theory when you're pass blocking, if you, if you miss him, he runs the other way. Just uh, keep standing around. He'll be by again shortly. You saw Pat Donnelly, 38, come into that backfield and Lizer went out. So Wong and Donnelly are both in that backfield along with Huey who's in motion. Staubach's the quarterback, runs the option. The pitch, and it's taken by Donnelly. And Donnelly lurches forward. He got enough for the first down with yardage to spare. It's a first and 10 for the Navy team at the 23-yard line of Army. There you see Pat Donnelly limping a little bit coming off the field, even though he made a fine run. He had a chance to move to the outside, probably pick up a little more yardage or maybe go all the way, but he was very determined uh, to get the first down, which he did, so he just went straight ahead. Lizer back in there now, so Wong moves over to fullback and Lizer to the left half, along with Huey the flanker and Staubach the quarterback. One minute, 58 seconds remaining in the half. Staubach sets, throws the sideline pattern, and it's a completed pass, taken by Norton. Just inside the 15-yard line. He went out of bounds. That stopped the clock at a minute, 51. Johnson made the tackle. A gain of eight yards, it'll be second and two. So again, at the Army-Navy game in Philadelphia, that clock is a factor. Remember last year when that clock ran out of time with Army in possession on the Navy two-yard line and Navy won the football game and it caused more discussion than perhaps anything that happened in the collegiate football season last year. Well, again, the clock is a factor, only this time it isn't the end of the game. It's the end of the half with which we are threatened here. Army leading eight, nothing in Navy driving. Staubach sets and throws out into the front. It is complete. Taken to the five. And Lizer's out of bounds at the three-yard line. That stops the clock. Tom Lizer, number 25. Navy having success loading the zone, flooding the zone. A split end to the left plus two back. Double flanker plus a split end. All three receivers on the same side. On the near part of your screen, they go down two men deep and with Lizer slipping out in the flat zone. And he is wide open and has been each time they run the play. 
So the midshipmen, and you see the tops of their caps there, directly below us, have come to life here with the Navy team driving. Taken by Lizer, and Lizer picks up a yard to the two-yard line. Towers and Clark made the last tackle. Here comes Ryan into the ball game now for Navy. A minute 27 left in the half. Again, they try it up the middle to Danny Wong, and Danny Wong is piled up at the one yard line. Towers and Clark again, the linebackers. The clock is running. Less than a minute to play in the half. And right now, we're getting that clock stopped with 57 seconds remaining. Time out here for the Navy team. When play is resumed, it'll be third down and goal to go for Navy at the Army one-yard line. Birdie is in for Stowers now at a linebacker spot. Next Saturday, NBC winds up the 1964 NCAA college football season with a game between Mississippi State and Mississippi starting at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time from Hemingway Stadium in University, Mississippi. Live, in color, exclusively on NBC TV. Butterfield, normally the offensive center, has also come into the lineup for Army defensively to try to beef up the defense a little bit. Army trying to dig in and hold an on-rushing Navy team. 57 seconds left in the half. Army leading by a score of 8 to nothing. There's that clock. Play before when uh, Tom Leiser went off tackle, he looked like he had a little more running room swinging to the outside, and he has the speed to do it. Navy has punched it in there a couple of times and uh, picked up small yardage. It gets tougher and tougher as you get closer and closer to that goal line. So we could probably anticipate if they don't get this last shot in there straight ahead, they might swing wide with it. This is the third down play. They try it in close, and the Army team holds Danny Wong carrying. It'll be fourth down and goal to go at the one-yard line. Stowers and Braun. Hit the tackle. You saw Danny Wong scrambling up to his feet there. So the clock is running 40 seconds, but there's plenty of time for that last play. This will be the big play. It makes a great difference. You can win at halftime, 8-7 to seven or 8-8 eight to eight or 8-6, eight to six, but you're right back in the game. Here we go. And it is a touchdown as they gave it to Lizer. Coming back, Lizer for the touchdown. Navy scored with Lizer coming back to the inside. All you got to do is get that ball to any part of that goal line or over it, and that's just about where it was. It came with 25 seconds remaining to be played in the half. It was a fourth down play. They had Wong and Huey stacked as running backs. They had Lizer set to the right. He cut back to the inside and dives it at the goal line, got it there for the touchdown. It's eight to six now. What do you do? Do you go for one, you go for two? In college football, of course, you can go for a two-point conversion. We have 25 seconds remaining to be played in the first half. Army eight, Navy six. They come up there to go for two. They're going to try to tie it here, a two-point conversion attempt. Roger Starbuck sets, fakes, and throws now into the end zone. And it's taken. It's good. It is good. He held it long enough. It was taken by Norton, Phil Norton, number 84. He took it, held it long enough, was shaken loose, but the official there says that's good, and it's tied at 8-8 with 25 seconds, and that's a happy gang of midshipmen. Roger Starbuck already had been hit. He was being pulled toward the ground when he cut the ball loose, and Norton had to leave his feet going into the air to pull it down, held it just long enough for it to count, and then we shake it loose. 
That's what happens, the extra effort, second effort by Staubach and by Norton, and Army secondary just relaxed momentarily and looked at well, Staubach was partially tackled, looked like he was on his way down to the ground, but he got the ball away and they relaxed just a little bit too soon. And so an Army team that hoped to go into the locker room with an 8-0 lead at halftime finds the score tied, 8-8. Marlon uh, Williams is going to kick off. Williams is going to kick off. And Seymour is the center deep man now for Army. Normally Marlon would kick off, but it is Tom Williams, the punter, who's going to kick it off because they want to dribble it downfield to prevent a run back. Stitchway has it at the 24. Raleigh Stitchway at the 30, and he's at the 31-yard line. The clock shows 18 seconds remaining in the hat. First and 10 now. For Army, with Army on the 31, you see the clock running. Score tied, 8-8. Eight, eight. Two seconds, one second, and that's that. Time has run out in the first half here. And the teams head for the locker rooms, and that's the end of the first half. The score is Army 8 and Navy 8. The center deep man there is John Seymour, number 43, to receive this kickoff of Tom Williams for Navy. And here is Williams' kickoff to start the second half. Seymour takes it on the three-yard line. Seymour to the five, to the 10, to the 15, to the 21-yard line. And that is where Army will put it in play first and 10 at the 21. You may remember that one year ago here at this stadium, at the end of the first half, it was Navy 7, Army 7. Navy won the game 21 to 15 with Army at the two yard line of Navy when the game ended. Well, it's another Army Navy game. It's another halftime, and it's tied 8 8 as Army is ready to put the ball play in play from scrimmage here in the second half. Rolly Stitchway is the Army quarterback. He's been seeing two way duty here this afternoon offensive quarterback, defensive safety man. Stitchway has the ball. Lunges forward, just put his head down and got that two extra yards. Gene Hardiman, Fred Musali made the tackle. It's at the 28-yard line. Again, a six, it'll be second down and four for the Army team. Seymour is 43, Stitchway is 16, Parcells is 31, and Johnson is 22. The score tied, eight to eight. Sam Champion split to the left side. Here in a wing tee, pitch to Seymour, looking for the first down, and he lunged across the 30-yard line. Bushbaum made the tackle, number 70. Appeared to be enough for the first down. It's first and 10 for Army at the 32-yard line. They're going to have to replace a few divots on that one. A couple of scores from other games in the first period. Florida nothing, Miami nothing. In the second period, Georgia nothing, Georgia Tech nothing. Right here, it's Army 8 and Navy 8, and that's the Corps of Cadets. All right, this time to Don Parcells, the fullback. Parcells at the 35-yard line, got three yards at second down and seven. Fred Musali and Don Downing, number 51, made the tackle. A good look at Rolly Stitchway calling the next play in the Army huddle. This is much of a huddle as it is an assembly. Now they're up there in the double wing set this time. Marcel's in motion. Give it to Seymour back to the inside. Hardman made the tackle and the penalty marker went down. A little continued action after the whistle and that's a personal foul. Ball is at the 38-yard line, but now the penalty will be inflicted. David Buchanan is the referee. Steps off the penalty against Army. A personal foul. That puts the ball at the 23-yard line. Well, that 
really hurt. Them being over aggressive and, and uh, moving and blocking after the whistle blown a dead. Instead of being third down and about three, maybe four, and the chance to pick up that first down, Army's faced with a situation now. Third down and 19. They're in the shotgun now with Stitchway deep. That's Seymour in motion. Low pass. Stitchway picks it up off the ground. He's sort of biding his time now. Raleigh Stitchway seeing if he can pick up a pattern at the 15. And he is tripped up by Dave Gillespie, number 64. Dave Gillespie got him at the 18-yard line for a loss of five more. Stitchway sort of biding his time and uh, moving along the sideline, then wheeled on the full pivot to see if he could pick up a pattern on the far side. 11 minutes, 50 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Army 8, Navy 8. It is fourth down. Fourth down. And here is Stitchway booting it out. Fair catch seemed to be called for by Skip Orr, number 33, and then he got out of the way when he saw it take the hop. It's being blown dead at the 44-yard line. You can go with a fair catch if you don't catch it. Then that ball's in play. There's time out on the field, and the score is Army 8 and Navy 8. Navy has the ball. They have it first and 10 at the Navy 44-yard line. Roger Staubach, number 12, is the quarterback. Tom Leiser, 25 and a half. Calvin Huey, 49 and a half. And Danny Wong, 36, is the fullback. Norton is the split in, number 84. Staubach has the ball. Looks for Norton and throws to the sideline incomplete. Johnson covering defensively, second and 10. That's Norton, number 84, coming back to the huddle. Man for whom the pass was intended. He's a Brooklyn boy. Good coverage by John Johnson uh, coming up fast from the secondary four army because Norton went down top speed about 10, 12 yards, turned around on a hook pattern, but not only did he turn around, he came back toward the line of scrimmage toward his quarterback. Makes it tough to cover, but Johnson did the job. Stutt number 83 in at end and Ryan out. They alternate coming in with information from the bench. That's Lizer in motion 25. Try this one up the middle. Gets just to the 45. Carberry came in to make the tackle. Fullback Danny Wong picked up a little more than a yard. Make it third down and nine. The ball is just across the 45-yard line. Navy eight, Army eight, with 10 minutes, 43 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Calvin Huey is the flanked halfback. Starbuck drops back. Throws to Huey, and it's incomplete. The defender going up with him was Ed Noble, number 20. Basketball will be in full swing by this time next week in every collegiate gymnasium and field house across the nation. That's right. Some of the top cage contests next Saturday night include Princeton at Army, Michigan at Duke, Penn at Navy, Indiana at Kansas State, St. Mary's at California, Stanford at San Francisco, and Washington at Oregon State. You saw Raleigh Sidgway retreating as Navy's in deep punt formation with Williams back to do the kicking. Williams gets the kickoff. Raleigh Stitchway is at the 16. Retreats to his 10. And Stitchway is brought down near the 14-yard line by a mass of Navy men downfield to cover the kick. This is the pattern that we had in the first part of the game in the first quarter, only turned around. The first quarter of the game, Navy had the ball over the back of the goal line most of the time. The wind in their face, and Army has had that uh, thus far in this third period. When they've handled the ball, it's been about their own 15 or 20-yard line going into the wind. First and 10 for the Army team at the Army 15-yard line. Up there in that double wing set. Seymour in motion, but they cut it back to Parcells, number 31, and he gets two yards to the 17. Cut down by Bill Stutt, number 83, at second down, and eight yards to go. Nine minutes, 34 seconds left in the third quarter. Score tied, eight to eight. Dave Ray goes out of the ball game at end, and Tom Schwartz, number 84, comes in for Army. 
Navy making multiple substitutions here. Navy's playing strictly uh, two platoon football, offensive unit and a defensive unit. Army would not have quite the problem, as you mentioned before. They have five men who are going pretty much both ways. They'll get a uh, plays rest once in a while. For example, uh, uh, Raleigh Stitchwood, he'll come out after they've had a long offensive drive to talk to Coach Paul Dietzel for uh, a play or two and then get back in on defense. But they do have five men for the most part during the game are going both ways. You look across at the Corps of Cadets. They are the visiting team. And now the Brigade of Midshipmen. Raleigh Stitchway on the quarterback draw. And he gets just up to the 20 and across is pushed back by John Mickelson and Don Downing. Have another score for you in the first period. Vanderbilt nothing, Tennessee nothing. Third down and five yards to go now for the Army team. They have the ball at their own 20-yard line. Dave Ray, number 87, comes back into the ball game. Now it in, and Tom Schwartz goes out. Big third down play coming here. Third and five for Army. And somebody beat the snap and contact was made in the neutral zone. Penalty markers go down. And let's see what the call is going to be here. Offside a preliminary call against both sides. And so they're offsetting penalties and nothing happens at all. So it remains third and five. Stitchway with the pitch to Johnny Johnson. Parcells throws the block. Johnson fighting his way up short of the 25 yard line. Al Roothouse, number 40. Duncan Ingram, number 22, made the tackle. So now they want to get that ball spotted exactly because it's close to a first down and uh, they're going to bring out the chain to see if it is a first down and if not, exactly how much is lacking. You watch the measurement now. If any part of that ball should be in advance of that stick, it would be a first down. It's not, it lacks about the length of the ball. So it's fourth down about the length of the ball needed. Gene Hardman, number 61, was looking things over there for Navy. The score is tied 8-8. We have 8 minutes, 21 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Stitchway trying to make the call. When Army goes into punt formation, they shift in the punt formation, but they try the sneak, and it is Stitchway carrying, and he appeared to pick it up on a quick snap. Stitchway tried to wedge him out, and he appeared to get enough for the first down. First and ten for the Army team. Well, it's always a good gamble when it works, but the uh, Army got that one there with Raleigh Stitchway carrying, and Navy tried it once before, not quite as deep in their own territory. In the first half, they gambled on fourth down, went for it, and made it. So with the score tied 8-8, it's a new life, at least temporarily for the Army team, as they have a first down at their own 25-yard line. Chappie is the split left end, number 86. Seymour in motion. It's Parcells carrying, number 31. Gene Hardman, 61, made the tackle. Army using still another formation here in the uh, second half. It's a double wing type of formation from an unbalanced line. The fullback is in place now. You just saw that last play. It was unbalanced strong to the far side of the field. Second down and nine yards to go for Army at their own 26. Johnson in motion, sprinting out there. Parcells has the football, number 31. He gets to the 35-yard line on a cross it. 
Ed Orr, number 33, Skip Orr made the tackle. Still unbalanced, and that time uh, the currently Navy to play before was overshifting toward the short side, the uh, undershifted side of the uh, offensive line of, of Army. And that time it, uh, uh, Stitchway thought that they were over there too far, so he went back to the strong side with his fullback for a big gainer of almost the uh, first down. Third down and about a foot to go, and Schwartz comes in and in, and Ray goes out now for Army. Information coming in from the bench from head coach Paul Dietzel. This is Johnny Johnson. Moving it to the 39-yard line. He picked up four yards. He picked up a first down. It's first and ten. Got a total of four yards on the play. Neil Henderson coming up to make the tackle for Navy. Now Ray is back in it down as Coach Paul Dietzel is alternating his ends in with information. This NCAA college football game is brought to you live in color exclusively on NBC TV. Five minutes, 24 seconds left in the third quarter. Seymour in motion, back to Parcel. But Navy piles him up at the 40-yard line. Ron Bushbaum, Dave Gillespie made the tackle. Ten of a yard, second and nine. Army used that very effectively in the first half, but the Navy linebackers are not fooled by Army taking a man and putting him in motion the opposite way, and then the other wing back comes across in a type of counter play uh, back to the opposite tackle to try to pull through. But the linebackers have been spotting the guards, pulling, spotting the counter. Navy stopped that play cold here in the second half. Double wing set, Seymour in motion, and Stitchway has the ball. It's good protection, and it's incomplete as Hartman almost intercepted. Gene Hartman, number 61, the defensive captain, almost intercepted as that ball was a little wobbly coming upfield, thrown by Raleigh, Raleigh Stitchway. Have another score for you in the second period. Florida nothing, Miami 10. All right here, it is the Navy 8 and Army 8 with 4 minutes, 44 seconds left in the third quarter. Situation third and nine for Army at their own 40-yard line. Stitchway with a quarterback draw. Picked up about three yards. Dave Gillespie and Don Downing made the tackle. It'll be fourth and six, and that's a punting situation for the Army, and Seymour is the man who does the kicking. Skip Orr, number 33, is ready to drop back to receive that punt the minute they shift into punt formation. And there they go. There goes Skip Orr. Seymour booms it out. Orr is at his 23, his 25. And Orr returns to the 31-yard line, perhaps 32. Skip Orr, along with Pat Downing, two fine offensive players early in the year because of injuries and now playing defense. As time out on the field with the score, Army 8 and Navy 8. Navy has the ball first and 10. They have it at their own 31. Mike Birdie's in in place of Sonny Stowers at a linebacker post. Tony Pierce is in place of Carl Stitchway at safety for Army. Navy up there. Led by Roger Staubach, number 12. Huey is flanked. Direct snap to Staubach. Fires it and it is deflected and taken near the midfield stripe. Navy. Cal Huey took it. Cal Huey took it after it had been deflected. And he was brought down by Piers at the 49-yard line of Army. You know, in the overall series, Navy has won 29 games. Army has won 30, and there have been five ties. Snap to the short man. Penalty marker down. A Navy man appeared to beat the snap. Pete Braun made the tackle. Danny Wong, the short man, got the snap. However, checked the penalty. It is an offside against Navy preliminary signal. When the brigade of midshipmen marched down to the field before today's ball game and were all situated out there, they gave one rousing cheer, so to speak, and it was even the score in 64. Meaning, of course, they'd like to win this one to pull all even with Army in the overall all-time series between the Military Academy and the Naval Academy. Outside against the Navy. 
Stowers and Stitchway are back in now. Well, they had enough time to catch their breath, and they're back in there defensively for the Army team. First down and 15 for Navy. Lazar, Staubach, Wong, and Huey in the backfield. Ryan and Norton, the end. Tobin and Freeman, the tackles. Conley and Marlin, the guards, and Kenton, the center. Huey and Long, back deep motion. The option play run by Staubach. Got to the 48-yard line. He got two yards. It'll be second down and 13. Bill Zadell and Sonny Stowers made the tackle. Right to run in the option play, as you've noticed, Navy sends a man in motion. When that man goes in motion, one of the interior linemen, he's actually a linebacker for Army, he goes out with the man in motion. So that's one man less they have to worry about on the defensive line. And then after that, they run the option play. Two minutes, 45 seconds left in the third quarter. Army 8, Navy 8 in Philadelphia. Huey is flanked this time, far side. Staubach rolls, sets, looks, and throws. And a diving grab. Did he get it? He did not. He trapped the ball. Norton. Norton trapped the ball, number 84. So it's an incompleted pass. The question is always, did it touch the ground? It didn't he? Well, the officials really cut it on the short hop. Second, third and 13 now at the 48. Well, the officials are doing a good job. They've had a lot of tough calls, close calls, whether the ball's been caught and uh, held in possession long enough before fumbling, which resulted in the two-point uh, conversion for Navy. That call, very close. Referee and officials right on top of it. Third down, 13 yards to go. Roger Staubach. Flips the football, complete at the 38. It is taken by Cal Huey. He's at the 36. Calvin Huey, number 49. Don Dietz brought him down. The Army secondary is playing the receivers very deep. They're not trying not to let them get behind them, but the opening, the open zone is from about five yards downfield to maybe 15, and the Navy receivers are going down and running a hook pad, and then they'll drift right or left and try to get free, and Roger Staubach gets the ball to them. That was a big, big play for the Navy team. It picked up a first down. Staubach again sets and whips the ball, and it's incomplete. Couldn't hold on as Norbach had it there. And Cal Huey could just hold it momentarily. Second and 10 at the 36. Calvin Huey's been doing a great job of getting himself open. He was wide open once again there. Just couldn't quite hang on to the ball. One minute, 47 seconds left in the third quarter of this game that is tied 8-8. Huey is flanked to the right side, just outside Norton, number 84, the end. Well, they try this one inside with Danny Wong, the fullback carrying. And he got it to the 32-yard line. A gain of four yards, it'll be third and six. Rivers and Carver made the tackle. NBC will carry a special presidential conference by Lyndon B. Johnson from Austin, Texas, today at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 Central, and 1.30 Pacific time. Third and six for Navy. Starbuck. Throws long, way down, incomplete. Tried to go for the long, long bomb that time. But to no avail, it's an incompleted pass. So it'll be fourth and six at the 32. Jim Ryan was the man for whom that pass is intended. He got down as far as he could and then died, but couldn't quite get to it. So Nickerson comes into the ball game. Uh, rather, Williams comes into the ball game for Navy. He is the punter. Saw number 61, uh, Stowers, Sonny Stowers for Army, a linebacker way deep. It was a tough job for linebacker to cover a fast halfback, but he was down near the goal line when the ball was thrown, and he was covering his man well. Uh, Williams is tying up the booting uh, shoe there to turn up that toe, and Felix Bassey is in the hole for it. It'll be a 50-yard field goal attempt. Not going to be long enough. Now, that ball's in play. It goes on into the end zone, gets near the end line, across the end line. That's the touchback. It'll be brought out to the 20-yard line, put in play there, first and 10. So they figured they might as well try the field goal attempt. It might be just as good as a punt. That to be true. There's only one problem sometimes when they attempt a field goal that is obviously too long. They can't kick it far enough. That is just like a punt. And the returning team, receiving team in this case being Army, they can return that just like a punt and many times from your field goal formation you don't you can't spread out and cover the kick as well a minute six seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter with the score tied eight eight and army has the ball first and ten on the army 20 yard line Roll 
Willis Fitzway running the attack. Double wing set. Parcells in motion. Seymour gets the ball. 43. Got about three or four yards as Gene Hardman, 61, made the tackle. He's a linebacker and a fine one for Navy. Second down and six now. Ball is at the 24-yard line. 43 seconds remaining in the third quarter with the clock running. Seymour again. Looking for a place to turn up field. Stop short of the 45-yard line. Or the 25-yard line. Gene Hardman again made the tackle. Third and six at the 24. And the clock is running now with 10 seconds remaining in the third quarter. So that may very well have been the last play of this period. They're still in the huddle. So there it is. Time has run out in this period. That's the end of the third quarter. The score is Army 8, Navy 8. Stay tuned immediately following this NCAA college football game for all the up-to-the-minute scores of other games on College Football Scoreboard with Jack Lascouli and Bob Murphy. This is Lindsey Nelson with Terry Brennan here in Philadelphia at the Army-Navy game where the score is tied 8-8. In case you've joined us along the way, Army went out in front 2-0 when Roger Staubach was pinned in the end zone for a safety. Army extended the lead by scoring a touchdown to make it 8-0, and Navy did not score until the closing moments of the first half. In fact, 25 seconds remained when Navy scored and made a two-point conversion to tie at 8-8. Army has the ball third and six at 30, the 24-yard line of Army. Stitchway gives it to Seymour, back to the inside, fighting at the 30-yard line. Close to a first down. He was looking for that last inch or two to try to pick up the first down. Donnelly and Mickelson made the tackle. It's a first down for Army. First and 10 at the 30-yard line. He got those last few inches he was looking for. We end the final period of play. That ball is spotted on the 31-yard line. Stitchway sets up and lost the long one down the sideline. And it was him, but he was across the sideline marker, I believe. Let's see. That's what it is. He was out of bounds when he took it. It was Johnny Johnson. Roothouse was covering defensively, but he was across the sideline marker and out of bounds when he took it. The wind doesn't seem to be that strong. To, uh, 10 to 20 miles an hour is what we were told prior to the game, but... Both teams have done much, much better when they've had the win at the back. In this case, Army in this last quarter have, now has the win at the back as the wind is blowing from right to left as you look at it. And Raleigh Stitchway seems to have waited until he gets that win at his back to start throwing the ball. Second and 10, Army's ball at the Army 31. Stitchway has it. He's going to run it to the 35, to the 40, to the 45, and out of bounds. Right over to the Navy bench. Duncan Ingram, number 22, was the man that he uh, collided with after going across the sideline marker. It's a first down for Army at the 48-yard line of Army. With the fine running ability of Rowley Stitchway uh, playing at quarterback, they have a fine sophomore quarterback at uh, Army, a boy named Fred Borowski. And we've been told that possibly during the course of this game, Borowski might go in at quarterback and move Stitchway to halfback because he can run so well and add a little extra threat with the passing of Borowski in addition to the running of Stitchway. Stitchway still has the ball. The long pass. Champy takes it, and Sam Champy is inside the 20-yard line. Al Rudolph brought him down. Great move by Sam Champy. He came up by the the almost the entire Navy secondary was around him. Three or four men. He had to come back for the ball. He just went up, out jumped them, and out of out fought them for the ball. First and ten for Army at the Navy 19-yard line. We're remaining to be played in this game. 13 minutes 35 seconds with the score tied 8-8. Freeman is coming there now at tackle, number 79, defensively for the Navy team. Champy is split to the left side. Oh. 
This is Parcells. Scrambling forward after he was hit. Pick up a yard or so. Well, you can tell well both teams, Army in particular, though, has spent uh, two weeks in preparation for this game doing a lot of things. Army has run from at least five different formations, and they've used them all frequently. They've uh, split the time quite well. The last one, once again, running from an unbalanced line, strong to the left, to their left, Army's left. Second down and eight yards to go for Army at the Navy 17-yard line. 12 minutes, 40 seconds remaining in the game. They're in that double wing set now. This is Seymour back to the inside. Got to the 13-yard line. Neil Henderson made the tackle. Army seems to have a little more uh, success with that counterplay now in this uh, fourth period than it did in the third period. They're hitting the hole just a little bit tighter. They were trying to go into the off-tackle hole, and now they're going over just about the guard situation, the guard hole, offensive guard. Third and four. The brigade of midshipmen there. Army in possession, third and four at the Navy 13-yard line. Twelve minutes left to play in the game. It's a Stitchway keeping and looking for the first down, and he got it at the seven-yard line. First and goal to go for Army. Gillespie made the tackle. What a runner. A lot of quarterbacks when they're running that bootleg, they have to swing to the outside. That's their only chance, but he's, he's one of the few that runs the option or the bootleg off tackle and makes yardage. So this is where the yardage gets tough as Navy starts to dig in the defense. Army driving here with a score tied 8-8. Eight, eight. And the Corps of Cadets wants the Army team to go. Seymour. No gain as Hartman was in there to make the tackle. The linebacker fired through. Seymour kept driving, but no gain on the play. Second down and goal to go at the seven-yard line. Schwartz comes in with the next play from Coach Paul Dietzel along the Army sideline. Stitchway, looking, faking, running, hitting for the corner and can't get daylight and goes across the five-yard line. Hardman brought him down. Started to go for the corner and he decided he was cut off and cut back to the four-yard line. So it's third down and goal. And right now, we're getting a timeout signal charged against Army. So Army takes the timeout. Timeout on the field with a score, Army 8 and Navy 8. Taylor Army will take the time out. The two very important downs came up, and they have five men going playing both offense and defense, particularly Sonny Stower, 61, Pete Brown, and Bill Zadell, the three linemen that gets it's get tough down there in that short yardage. Third down and goal. This is Stitchway carrying and looking, and he still has the ball, and he is down at the three-yard line. It'll be fourth down and goal as the Navy defense dug in again. Playing Stitchway as he went on the option. Rudhouse finally made the tackle. And Neil Henderson. So here it is, fourth down. Last year, when the game ended, Army was on the Navy two-yard line and wanted one more play. Well, they're on the three-yard line now, and they have one more play, and they go to the field goal. As Pierce is going to hold, Nickerson will kick from the 10, so it's a 20-yard field goal attempt. Pierce holding. Barry Nickerson will kick. Up. Good. The field goal came with 9 minutes, 30 seconds left in the game, and it sends Army out in front by a score of 11 to 8. This NCAA college football game is brought to you live in color exclusively on NBC TV. So an Army team that led in the first half at one point by a score of 8 to nothing, only to see Navy drive down there in the closing seconds of the first half to tie at 8-8, has gone ahead by a score of 11-8, but this one is a long way from over. We have a lot of football to be played with nine and a half minutes yet to go in this game. 
Barry Nickerson, the man who kicked the field goal, does the kick off. There's one of the Army mules that are here today. There are four of them, including the two that were gifts of the Air Force Academy. Tom Leiser is the center deep man for Navy. Leiser at the four. Lost his balance and uh, he didn't get the ball. As a matter of fact, the knee went down back on the four yard line. As a matter of fact, it was Angel who was there with Leiser and they couldn't decide who was going to take it. And as a result, the ball is spotted on the four yard line. Well, there's a break for Army, uh, slipping to try to catch the kick and puts the ball down on the four-yard line with a back to the wall. Maybe once again, they've been here many, many times uh, today in this football game, and now they're into the wind. So it makes it a little bit difficult should they stall out and have to punt. They go, they're kicking into a pretty good win. Navy is 96 yards away from the Army goal. Starbuck. Handing off to Danny Wong. He got it out to the eight-yard line. They're looking for a little room to maneuver it on there now. It's second and six. Sonny Stowers made the tackle. Eight and a half minutes remaining to be played in the game. Stowers comes out now, and Birdie comes in at a linebacker post for the Army. Coming to the outside is Lizer, and Lizer stretches out the long legs as he gets up to the 14-yard line. Townsend Clark made the tackle. And that is a first down for Navy. So now the midshipmen have maneuvering room as they move it out from the 4 to the 14 with 8 minutes 6 seconds left in this game. Roger Staubach at the helm for the Navy. Danny Wong, the fullback, cutting back in to the 17-yard line. He picked up 3 at 2nd down and 7. Townsend Clark and Bill Zadell made the tackle. Army is leading by a score of 11 to 8. As you know, Navy has defeated Army in five consecutive Army-Navy games. Army now out in front and trying to break the spell that Navy has held over them in recent years. You can see Bill Zadell, number 76, and Pete Braun, number 50. They've been in there all the time without any rest. Sonny Stowers was uh, taken out of the game for a few moments by uh, Coach Paul Diesel, but Braun and Zadell are in there. They've been going just about all the time. I don't believe they've had a rest uh, through the entire game. Goble is in at fullback, number 34 now for Navy. Starbuck has the ball, fires it, and it is taken at the 26-yard line, a completed pass. It is Ryan, number 88, Jim Ryan, who took that ball and was upended immediately by Johnny Johnson. It is a first down for the Navy. They have it at the 27-yard line, first and 10. Navy in possession and trying to drive now with 6 minutes, 58 seconds. They made it to be played in the game. Roger Starbuck retreating. Fires it complete out into the middle. And it is Ryan again, moving it up to the 44-yard line. Jim Ryan. And Navy is on the move here. Wide open again, what Navy is doing with a split end and a flanker, uh, or with, with from the tight end area. They'll send three men down on a simple hook pattern. They go down 10 or 12 yards and turn around, but the three of them will be spread quite a distance across the field. And Army playing it three deep with eight men up front uh, is giving that short zone and, and giving it up. Navy's taking it. Harold Stitchway made the last tackle for Army. It's first and 10 now for Navy. They are near the 45 yard line as Starbuck fires to the sideline. Taken there at the 48, but an incompleted pass. An incompleted pass. So make it second and 10 at the 45. Six minutes, 13 seconds left in the game. Army leading 11 to 8. Navy moving that ball steadily upfield. Starbuck again. And he 
he moves it across the 50-yard line. Roger Staubach for the Navy team. Bill Zadell and Pete Braun made the tackle. It's at the 49-yard line of Army. Third down and four yards to go. The skies uh, is becoming more and more overcast here. It's getting uh, rather dark. I'm sure this would be a good time for the hidden ball trick or some of the reverses or counter plays. It'll be a little bit hard, a little difficult to follow the ball. You're right, Terry, and it might be well to point out it is a lot brighter on your television screen than it is on that field. Roger Staubach leaped into the air but could find nobody open and was dropped for a loss. Sam Chappy, in there on defense, made the tackle. At the 47-yard line, a loss of four, so it's going to be fourth and eight. Good coverage by Johnny Johnson, number 22, out in the deep secondary for Army. Staubach tried to throw deep to his big end, but he couldn't quite get it off because Johnson was all over him, and he would have inter possibly intercepted, but he certainly had good coverage on the receiver. Tom Williams, the Navy punter, is coming to the ball game in a fourth and eight situation. He goes into deep punt formation. Five minutes, 23 seconds left to play. Raleigh Stitchway retreats in single safety for the Army. Williams gets a good pass. And barely got it out and roughing the kicker. Roughing the kicker marker goes down. The ball goes out of bounds at the 34-yard line. But John Carver was firing in and collided with the kicker and a penalty marker went down as Williams was flat on the seat of his pass. Carver was giving it the all-out effort. It was a referee's flag. Situation was fourth and eight. Line of scrimmage was the 47. The 15-yard penalty for roughing the kicker. It's being faced off now. It gives Navy the ball in Army territory. First down and 10 yards to go at the 38-yard line. There's a big break for Navy after Army had held them defensively and forced them to punt. One of those things where the uh, defensive right end for Army came in there, came in there hard, trying to block the kick, and in his, uh, in his motion, he was up in the air trying to get at the kick and couldn't hold himself. There's timeout on the field with the score. Army 11 and Navy 8. Right here, Navy has the football. They have it first and 10 at the Army 38-yard line. We have five minutes, 15 seconds left to play. And this one is being played under an overcast that is mostly darkness now on this field here in Philadelphia. One year ago, it was Navy out in front and Army driving late in the ball game. Now it is Army leading and Navy driving late in the ball game. Roger Staubach retreats and throws at the sideline. The 19-yard line, Paul Norton leaps high into the air. The lights have just been turned on here. There are not many lights in Philadelphia, but uh, at least at this stadium, but uh, the ones that are here have been turned on. That ball is being spotted now at the sideline, and the chain will be brought across for the measurement before it's taken to the inbounds market to see whether or not it's a first down. First and ten for Navy. First and ten for the Navy team at the Army 28-yard line. The clock is stopped with five minutes, ten seconds remaining to be played in this game. Huey is flanked to the far side. Staubach retreating. And he is stopped by the on-rushing Army line. At the 39-yard line, Dave Rivers made the tackle. Looked like he got a little help from uh, Don Dietz, number 37, who's in on that play, too. Coming from his linebacker spot, he moved in close to the line of scrimmage, and just as that ball was centered, he timed it beautifully, and he rushed through the gap between the guard and center, a guard and offensive center, Navy, and Roger Staubach never had a chance. 
Second down and 22 yards to go now for Navy at the 39-yard line. Quick pitch to Lizer, trying to go outside. Goes out of bounds about the 40-yard line. Switch way, and Noble ran him out of bounds. So there was a loss of another yard on the play. Four minutes, 29 seconds left to play in the third in the game. Four minutes, 29 left in the game with Army leading by a score of 11 to 8. Shotgun formation, Staubach is deep, gets a direct pass. And he can't get rid of it as the Army defense again rushes through and snows him under. The ball is at the 47-yard line. The 47-yard line. A loss of 13 yards on the play. One of the men in there once again at the bottom of the pile, Pete Brown, number 50. Pete Braun, I mean. And he's been in there playing all the way, going both ways, offense and defense. Must be a little bit tired, but you'd never know it, the way he's rushing that passer. This series of down started on the Army 28. The ball is now on the Navy 47, fourth and 35. Williams in to do the punting. Williams punts for Navy. Stitchway is deep. Ball hits on the 20, bounds around. There'll be no run back. And it's being down on the 19-yard line. So Army gets it with three minutes, 36 seconds left in the game. Got a kick out of watching the Army line rushing that punt. They didn't come within three or four yards of that kicker. I'm sure Paul Dietzen said, don't even rush. Just come across the line of scrimmage and make sure he doesn't run with the ball. But don't rough the kicker. So here in the fourth quarter, in this instance, it was the Army defense that moved in after Navy got to the 28-yard line. There's timeout on the field with the score. Army 11 and Navy 8. Next Saturday, NBC winds up the 1964 NCAA college football season with a game between Mississippi State and Mississippi, starting at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time from Hemingway Stadium in University, Mississippi. Live, in color, exclusively on NBC. Right here, Army is leading Navy by a score of 11 to 8. We have three and a half minutes left to play. Army has the ball first and 10 at the Army 19-yard line. This way, handing off. Taken by Parcell. And he got up to the 27-yard line. Duncan Ingram made the tackle. It'll be second down and two yards to go now for Army. If they can pick up a couple of first downs and keep the drive alive, that's what they'll try to do to run out the clock with three minutes, five seconds remaining to be played in this game now. And it is Parcells, number 31, carrying. He got enough for the first down. As you say, you can see the strategy by Army. Tight T, ends tight, all backs in, running from a power conservative formation, trying to hang out of that football, kill the clock. Two minutes, 40 seconds, and the clock is running. First and 10 for Army at the 32, and all the Army personnel realizes that this can be the greatest moment for Army football and its followers in recent years. Because Navy has won from the Army in five consecutive seasons. And Army is trying to break the spell. First and 10 at the 32. They keep it in close this time. Moving it up to the 34-yard line with Johnny Johnson carrying. Freeman and Philbin are in there defensively at tackles now for the Navy. It is second down and eight yards to go. Dale Hall, who was Paul Dietzel's predecessor as head coach, at the military academy, was never able to defeat Navy in three consecutive tries, and then Paul Dietzel was brought on as the first non-graduate coach, non-alumnus coach in 75 years. This is Dietzel's third try at the Navy. Here's a pitch to Seymour, and he is brought down for a loss at the 31-yard line. Bush, uh, it's Freeman made the tackle. Clock shows one minute, 36 seconds. Uh, with the clock still running, still moving. No flag. Time is uh, time is called out. The clock is stopped. This is a Navy timeout. Navy has taken a timeout with a minute 36 left. Situation third and 11 at the 31-yard line. 
Hey, they had to use one of the timeouts to get the clock stopped. Uh, usually you wait until you get the ball on offense and try to use those timeouts to stop the clock and run as many plays in a short period of time. But with Army having possession of the ball and taking their good-natured time, they had to use one of the most valuable weapons, of the timeout, in this last period. As we said before, it's said many times of many games, but the Army-Navy game is one in which the entire success or failure of the season rides on the outcome of one game because... If you win the Army-Navy game and you're one of the participants, it's a great, great season no matter what happened before. And if you lose it, well, no matter what happened before, it's a bad, bad year. Marlin has come in defensively now in place of Hartman for Navy. Stay tuned immediately following this NCAA college football game for all the up-to-the-minute scores of other games on College Football Scoreboard with Jack Pascoli and Bob Murphy. Army's ready to go third and 11 for 31 with a minute 36 left. Army leading 11 to 8. This is Seymour carrying. He finds some running room and lunges up to the 40-yard line. He picked up nine yards, but it'll be fourth and two now. And Dan Downing made Don Downing made the tackle for Navy. And again, the clock is stopped. This Navy calls time. They don't want that clock to run. It's a minute 21 showing right now. One minute, 21 seconds left to play in the game. Army leading Navy 11 to eight. There's that clock. There's a discussion going on with uh, Paul Dietzel on the sidelines and number 43, John Seymour. And as you know, John Seymour is the punter, and I'm sure he's getting instructions that doubt, very doubtful that they want to take a gamble under this, uh, this uh, uh, circumstance. They'll probably kick that ball and uh, try to cover well and then play a nice, loose defense and try to hold Navy from moving downfield. And on the other hand, Navy, of course, wants one last chance because they have a man named Roger Staubach there, last year's Heisman Trophy winner, everybody's All-American last season, hobbled this year by an injury that came early. But they want to give him one more shot with the football. It is fourth down and two for Army. They have the ball at their own 40-yard line. When they go into punt formation, they shift into punt formation. And there they go, sending Seymour deep. Skip Orr retreating for the Navy. There is the kick. Hits on the 30. Skip Orr lets it go. Back to the 20. There'll be no run back. And it's at the 19-yard line. Down, that's the 19. But there is a penalty marker down. So the clock is held up with a minute, eight seconds left in the game while we check the penalty. Ball is down at the 19-yard line. Situation back up field, you'll recall, was fourth and two. So if it is a penalty against the Navy, Army would be able to retain possession if it's from the line of scrimmage, but there's no point in conjecture. We'll wait and see. The man in the white cap there will tell us. It's gonna be faced off against the Army team. A 15-yard penalty for holding. So that moves the ball way, way back. A holding penalty against Army. Moves the ball back to the 26-yard line. That makes it fourth and 17. So now that could make a difference in the complexion of this ball game. It sure could. Army, Army's had a couple of very uh, uh, bad breaks, penalties. One when roughing the kicker, which, of course, is uh, a mistake. And here are the holding penalty when they had a good punt. Now with Seymour going deep, it is Angel who is the deep man now for Navy. Skip Orr is playing upfield, and Angel is the center deep man. High pass. They're not putting a rush on. They want to get that ball back if they can. Angel is back there. Calls for a fair catch and takes it at the 33-yard line. Clock shows 57 seconds. It's kind of interesting to watch John Seymour, 43, the kicker for Army. He took his good-natured time back there because he looked at that Navy defense, and they were not rushing. They were not coming in hard enough, so he thought, I'll wait and give my men time to get downfield to cover the kick. Navy's ready to go with 41 seconds showing on the clock the shotgun, and Roger Staubach throws the sideline pattern, and it's taken at the 41-yard line. A completed pass. Nickerson took the pass. Well, that's going to be a wild group of cadets across the field there if they can hold on with 35 seconds to go. The short zone, the short passing zones are still open, and Roger Staubach, I, I do believe, will take advantage of either down on the sideline, out and catch it and step out of bounds, or even a hook pattern, and the receiver will try to run out of bounds to stop the fight. Second down and a yard to go for the Navy team. 35 seconds left. Staubach has the ball. Wants to throw deep, but is tipped up and has to eat the football at the 43-yard line. 
He picks up one yard. Dave Rivers made the tackle. It is being spotted near the 42. 18 seconds left to play in the game. Starbuck sets and throws long, and it's Huey. He takes it, and it goes away an incompleted pass. Stops the clock with 10 seconds left in the game. Cal Huey was the man for whom it was intended. He was at the 42-yard line of Army. Dietz and Stitchway did a great job back there to deflect that. He had that ball in his hands and would have caught it had the tackle not been as jarring and tough as it was to cause him to lose the ball. He didn't hold it on to it long enough. Army operating in a four-man line, giving a four-man rush, and seven men are back on pass defense. Fourth down, less than a yard to go for Navy. The ball is at the Navy 42, but the yardage is of little consequence because the time is the thing. Ten seconds left to play in this game. The clock will start when the ball is snapped. This could very well be the last play of the ball game. Army leading 11 to 8. Starbuck has the ball for Navy. And the Army defense throws him down. He has to eat it. And he flipped it out instead to Stutt. And Stutt takes the ball. And the game is over as Stutt moved to the 44-yard line. And look at that scene on the field. The cadets swarming out because they at long last have defeated the Navy team. This is a happy gang of cadets. They have broken the reign of the Navy team. They have broken the string of five straight as Army has won it by a score of 11 to 8. They streamed out of there. On the final play, Starbuck, as he was going down, flipped the ball out to Bill.